Good morning, greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I'm your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I specialize in using nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your vitality and health and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body. You are more and more knowledgeable and you know you can overcome any health issue. That's why we're here every day on The Bright Side helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 29 years of practicing pharmacy, I've seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes and hypertension and obesity and skin diseases like acne and psoriasis and eczema and rosacea, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds, recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle, but what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure because the human biological system is a healing system. It's a regenerating system. It is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment basis. And while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we welcome your calls on the bright side. Our number 844-236-6010. 844-236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products or ingredients or formulations or skincare or something you may have heard about on the news or something you may have heard about on this program, 844-236-6010 is our number. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised on the program, please head over to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. You can order products right off the websites, pharmacistben.com. And uh, criticalhealthnews.com are also blogs, which I blog on regularly. And also there's news stories up there as well. If you want to join the Brightside Ben team, you can do it right off the website also. Or you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866-735-2470. Start yourself a longevity business and help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. And if you want to purchase any of our truth treatment products, truth retinol gel, Truth Balm, Truth Serum, or our Omega-6 Healing Cream, please head to truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, so we're talking about activated EFAs, eicosanoids. These are the hormones of inflammation and anti-inflammation. There's no inflammation that occurs in the body without these super important activated EFAs. If that doesn't tell you everything you want to know about why you should be supplementing with a good EFA supplement that's in balance. And by the way, nobody really knows how much EFAs anyone needs. There's no way to know because as we're, uh, as our bodies are growing and developing and healing, our EFA needs change. So there's no way to know how much to take on your essential fatty acids, your ultimate EFAs or your ultimate EFA plus. Personally, it's, I think it's better to overdose because they're non-toxic and your body's just going to store or get rid of what it doesn't use. So nine a day, 12 a day, you can't really overdose on these things. You want to go by your symptoms, especially if you have skin symptoms. EFAs, eicosanoids, this is all about the inflammatory system in the body. When you hear the word inflammation, if you're like most of most folks in this culture, when we hear that word, we think it's somehow a bad thing. But let me tell you something. Inflammation is about survival. Inflammation is not a bad thing. It's an incredibly important thing. This is why you have more inflammatory hormones in your body than, you're, than you do anti-inflammatory. At least you have more inflammatory uh, eicosanoids, omega-6 fatty acids, the inflammatory fatty acids, than you do omega-3s. Inflammation is a key component of survival. It's not a bad thing, despite the fact that a large proportion, if not the most important proportion of the drugs that we take are anti-inflammatory. So you get this idea, we get all get this idea in our culture that we want to be suppressing inflammation. That is not the case. Inflammation is critical. We want inflammation, however, not to be chronic, and we want it in balance. There's a difference here. It's not like you want to shut down inflammation. You want to balance it. It's not like you want to shut down inflammation. You just don't want your body inflamed all the time. It's not the inflammatory process itself. That's the issue. It's the chronic, never-ending inflammation from the way we eat, basically. Remember, we said this whole inflammatory process is about food 
and it's about thinking and feeling. So we're going to leave that aside for now. Love to do a show just on that someday. But in terms of nutrition, in terms of health, in terms of biochemistry, strictly biochemistry, it's the foods we're eating, period. Again, this isn't about beating up anybody for foods, but you got to understand if you're dealing with excessive inflammation, it's foods. Not in this airy fairy kind of way, but in a scientific, hardcore biochemistry way. If you're dealing with excessive inflammation in the body, it is largely a food issue. Now, there is inflammation, of course, it's associated with damage over the course of time. We get damage, and that will cause an inflammatory problem. Broken cells, dead cells, ugly cells, disformed or dis, uh, deformed cells. Again, probably because of food, but once there's broken down tissue in the body or, or dysfunctional cells or deformed cells, that can cause inflammation too. This is something that some, is really missed a lot. If we have long-term degeneration, long-term inflammation, what ends up happening is cells become deformed. They can't do their work. They, uh, they have their own self-destruct program, so they blow up basically, you know, like the old Mission Impossible TV show where it says this tape will self-destruct in five seconds. Well, guess what? Cells have a self-destruct program. Cell suicide, they call it. Apoptosis is the fancy word. But what it means is cells will kill themselves when they're deformed. But here's the problem. When a cell kills itself, now you've got all this cell debris. You've got enzymes and chemicals and parts of cells, and that all has to be cleaned up. Once in a while, it's one thing, but when it happens over and over again, that's a source of inflammation also. Now, you can't do anything about that until you control the food problem and the digestive issues. That's why every single person that I ever talk to about a health challenge, the first thing I say is foods, 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 and digestion, that whole 30-foot tube that runs from our mouth to the other end. And this is, remember, we started talking about fats. We said fats are difficult to process. So the fatty part of the body needs special attention. Fatty nutrients, EFAs, need special attention. They're not in foods. And if you're dealing with an inflammatory issue, you want to be supplementing. And if you have a skin problem, first and foremost, consider it a fatty issue. Fat nutrient deprivation, that is shortages or deficiencies in vitamin A, particularly little bumps on the arms, acne, eczema, psoriasis, all of these are classic signs of vitamin A deficiency, which is very common, incredibly common. Not only because we don't get much of it in our diet, but also because it's hard to process. So fat, if you have any kind of skin issue, think fats. Vitamin A, vitamin D. It's such a tragedy that we have a vitamin D deficiency problem, considering it should be easy to get, at least in the summertime. That's why you want to be out in the sun. And don't let anybody ever tell you that vitamin D is, uh, from a supplement or vitamin D from a food is the same as vitamin D from the sun. It's not. Vitamin D from the sun is of a far superior quality, and vitamin D from the sun actually acts as a sun, protect, uh, sun protection. In any case, vitamin D and A work together. They're hormones, and they're very, 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 very important for the skin, especially if you're dealing with a skin problem, including aging, by the way, including accelerated aging, wrinkles and fine lines. Everybody wants a wrinkle cream, and, and I'm, you know, I've been in the skin business, and I've made my share of wrinkle creams, but... A good vitamin A supplement or a good nutritional supplement program that features vitamin A and vitamin D is way more important than any wrinkle cream you could ever use. And as it turns out, the best wrinkle cream is vitamin A wrinkle cream, retinol or retinoic acid. And then you have your EFAs. Take a bunch. Get on a loading dose. If you haven't taken EFAs before, get on we call, what we call loading dose, where you take a ridiculously high amount, 12, 15, 18 capsules a day. Or if you're going to do the liquid, swig it out of the bottle, tablespoons full. And then you can wean yourself down. And watch for your conditions, whatever, if you have a condition, a skin condition, watch for it to improve. And always use vitamin E with your EFAs. Vitamin E and EFAs go together. EFAs, remember, are unstable. And vitamin E is your protector vitamin. It protects EFAs. Smart, smart companies like Longevity will put vitamin E in with, the, uh, with their EFAs. But it wouldn't hurt you to take extra vitamin E. I, I've been meaning to talk about vitamin E. Really super-duper important vitamin. And we will get to that when we finish talking about omegas and eicosanoids. On the Bright Side, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more good health information right after this. Don't go away. Okay, 
right, we are back on the bright side. I am Pharmacist Ben. 844 236 6010 is our number, and we do have lines open for you. 844 236 6010. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear recommended on the program, please head to brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. And if you'd like to start a longevity business and earn some thank you checks for turning people on to the longevity products, you can call the Brightside Ben phone team at 866 735 2470. They can tell you all about it. All right, we're talking EFAs, essential fatty acids, omega 3s, and omega 6s. So uh, deficiencies are just so common. They're not in foods. You've got to supplement. If you've tried to use, by the way, uh, retinol products, My Truth Retinol uh, gel, 5% gel, or any retinol or retinoic acid products, and you find yourself really peeling excessively, that's a classic sign of an EFA deficiency. Flakiness in the skin is also a classic sign of an EFA deficiency, flakiness. Now, in the skin, it's probably going to be an omega-6 deficiency. And by the way, acne also can be associated with these kinds of deficiencies. Sebum skin oils are kept liquid by the actions of essential fatty acids, omega-6 essential fatty acids. Under deficiency conditions, the body will stick in thicker fats, whatever fats it can find to make sebum, to make skin oil. And this has a tendency to make the sebum thick and sticky and cloggy. And this is one of the reasons why people, why people end up with zits, with breakouts. The, the uh, sebum is too sticky. Too, uh, too viscous or too sticky to flow efficiently through the pores and it sticks in the pores. So if you have acne or if you have eczema or psoriasis, these are all issues to think about omega-6 essential fatty acids. Omega-3s are important. There's no doubt about it. Omega-3s are important for anti-inflammation to balance things out. But omega-6s are important for part of the, because they're a part of the structure of the skin. They're both important. I don't want to say which one is more important than the other. It's the balance that you're looking at. Two to one, three to one, omega-6 to omega-3. You always want more omega-6s than omega-3s. If you have psoriasis or eczema, one or the other, may, you may notice benefits by taking extra omega-3s. You may notice benefits by taking extra omega-6s. For that matter, you're going to have to play with it. There's a really neat omega-6 fatty acid called gamma-linolenic acid, GLA, and we're going to talk about that uh, probably tomorrow. Man, is that important stuff. And that one is really tricky to get, but it's got some wonderful, literal medical benefits, not just supplemental benefits, medical benefits, GLA, and it's a derivative of of omega-6s. Omega-3s are the ones you hear about, although in the last, I'd say maybe the last year, couple of years, there's been these studies that come out where, where they say, well, we, tre- we tested omega-3s and it turns out they don't do anything for Alzheimer's disease. We tested omega-3s and it turns out it doesn't do anything for heart disease, blah, 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 blah. Because this is, the idea that you take a supplement for a disease is what, where you get these crazy conclusions that, that the mainstream media draws, that you take this supplement and it didn't help this disease, so for some, somehow that means the supplement's not important. That's not how it works. Omega-3s are not a cure for anything. They're not a remedy for anything, but they're important. They're critically important. And most people don't get enough. So the problem with omega-3s nowadays anyway is there's a perception problem. There was an article in this month's uh, a trade journal, nutritional supplement trade journal called Nut- Nutraceuticals World that talks all about it. They say omega-3s have gotten some bad press lately because uh, of these, just a, over the last couple of years, maybe seven or eight studies have come out. Oh, it didn't help for this disease, didn't help for that disease. Don't pay attention. You need your omega-3s. And they're hard to get. The omega-3s are found in seeds, flax and hemp, flaxseed oil and hemp seed oil. Those are two great sources, it's probably the two best sources, at least, well, the two best, flaxseed and hemp seed, chia seed also, those are the th- probably, the th- probably the three best sources of what, what are called parent omega-3s. There are derivative omega-3s that are found in fish and seafood, and they're also important, but they're not essential the way the ones from flax and hemp and chia are. My, my advice is to, to use both, a seed oil and a fish oil together. That way you make sure you cover all your bases. The technical name for omega-3 is ALA, alpha-linolenic acid, alpha-linolenic acid, ALA. That's the technical name for omega-3. The stuff you get in fish oil is called DHA and EPA. That's different. Not that it's not important. It's just different. ALA is the one that's converted into anti-inflammatory uh, eicosanoids. Now, everybody knows these days that fish 
And seafood is the best source for, or the best source for these two special